Hey everyone, Christmas will thrive and survive. May have to hang with me just a little bit here, but I promise you it's going to be worth it. I'm going to make this as short and sweet as possible. I uh, just did a Google search. What is the vacuum of space in Tor? Uh, the lower the number, the more the vacuum is. Outer space, 10 to the uh, negative sixth power. That's the minimum. That is the minimum you get in outer space, according to NASA. To 1 times 10 to the negative 17th. Way, way, way more than 10 to the negative 6th. So this is the bare minimum right here. So what does it take on Earth to, what kind of materials are needed to be able to sustain the minimum 10 to the negative 6? Let's take a look. Space Power Facility is a NASA facility used to test space flight hardware under simulated launch and space flight conditions. So you can come here. I will put the link below in the description. Uh, thermal vacuum testing. This is what we're interested in. And they get into other stuff like radiation and stuff like that, which Apollo astronauts supposedly went through with no problems, right? Anyway, thermal vacuum test chamber, SPF, is a vacuum chamber built by NASA in 69. So they built this after the astronauts went to the moon, okay? It stands 122 feet uh, high and 100 feet well uh, in diameter. But here's what I want you to get to. The facility can sustain a high vacuum, 10 to the negative 6 tour. This is the minimum for outer space. Simulate solar radiation, blah, blah, blah. But we're only interested right now in this uh, chamber. Anyway, let's look at the concrete chamber enclosure. The concrete chamber enclosure serves not only as a radiological shield, but also as a primary vacuum barrier from atmospheric pressure. 130 feet in diameter and 150 feet high, the chamber was designed to withstand atmospheric pressure outside of the chamber at the same time vacuum conditions are occurring within. Now, let's think spacesuit. Spacesuit is just the opposite. You have vacuum outside, pressure inside. The concrete thickness varies from 6 to 8 feet or 1.8 to 2.4 meters. 6.8 or 6 to 8 feet is the thickness of the concrete around the barrier. Think about that. So you think, well, that's plenty for a vacuum chamber, right? Uh-uh. And contains a leak, a leak tight steel containment barrier embedded within. Every vacuum chamber they build has to have not only thick concrete, if they're building of any size, but it has to have a steel containment barrier. You know why? Because even eight feet of concrete in a vacuum of 10 to the negative six, the air will suck through it. Think about that. Eight feet of, up to eight feet of concrete, and you still need a steel containment barrier embedded within it. Amazing. That's the power of a vacuum, which is the very minimum that they can have in space. Anyway, you can read all the different details here, and uh, you can see some of the concrete here, uh, how thick it is. Very thick, and yet they still have to have steel. All right. So now, this is the important part. This is where cognitive dissonance will kick in for uh, many people. So we were told that man landed on the moon and walked in the vacuum of space on the moon, plus space walks in between with other different launches and things like that, correct? Yeah. Long before they built this facility, they were supposedly walking in space. So... Uh, if it takes six to eight feet of concrete and a steel barrier to contain a vacuum, let's see what the Apollo astronauts used in their spacesuits. Link for this below, the Apollo A7L spacesuit materials list. Now, this is the only one we're going to be interested in here, the extra vehicular suit, because we want to know when they're outside the vehicle, when they're on the moon, or when they're doing a spacewalk like they supposedly do around the space station.
Okay, what do they have? <laughs> they have 15 layers. This, this keeps going. Oh, no, no, no. They got 21 layers now. Keeps going up. Teflon cloth, beta cloth. These are abrasion and flame resistance, fire protection. Aluminized griddle captain, reflective insulation. Got to reflect that intense sunlight off, right? Uh, Teflon coated silica fiber laminate to captain. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that word. I don't know what it is. Spacer. This is a spacer between reflective surfaces. Uh, aluminized mylar. That's for reflective insulation. More. You know, wow. Five layers of reflective insulation. Can't have that heat, can you? Non-woven Dacron spacer. Neoprene coated nylon. We know what nylon is. We know what Dacron is. These are just fibrous materials. Oh, man. Nylon. Everybody knows what nylon is. Anybody have any stockings? That'll hold out uh, uh, the vacuum of space, won't it? Resistant layer for pressurized bladder. That'll, yeah. Neoprene coated nylon. Ladder material serving as impermeable layer containing suit pressurization oxygen. Oh, boy. This, so this is holding the pressure in. I don't know how they create 14 pounds per square inch and keep that going without venting in the space, uh, which would expose it to a vacuum, uh, which would immediately collapse everything. So anyway, uh, supposedly you have this bladder material. Um, <laughs> Neoprene coated nylon. So I guess this coated nylon has to be at least six to eight feet of concrete with a steel barrier in it. That's what we're to believe because that's what they need for a vacuum on Earth. Neoprene convolute pressure retaining flexible joint. It's all about pressure in, not not worrying about keeping uh, the whole thing from leaking into the vacuum. Knit jersey laminate abrasion protection. And then finally, we have Nomax cloth, lightweight, no less, for comfort. So we're not interested in these because these are other suits. So that's what you have, and that is supposed to keep you protected from 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the minus 17th tour. So, again, go back and take a look at all this. Um, Here's a picture of the vacuum chamber uh, that I have in the thumbnail, and this is in uh, this is the same one uh, in Ohio. Look at the thickness of the concrete; it's got to have a steel barrier in it. And people think that people are going with cloth, hand and machine sewn, into space and ten to the negative six to ten to the negative seventeenth tour. No wonder nobody accepted the $10,000 challenge to go into a space suit and go into a vacuum chamber. I wouldn't do it either. If you use your brain, you won't ever think that we could have gone into space and never could if space is indeed a vacuum like we're being told. God bless, guys. Thank you.